We've come a long way since the Wright brothers' first flight in 1903. That day they lifted the world into a new dimension. Then we achieved bigger, faster planes. Great, but that's also how we ended up with all these emissions. Jet engines burn kerosene, which releases carbon dioxide, one of the main greenhouse gases causing climate change. The industry faces an enormous challenge to clean up its act, and that means coming up with new fuels. But let's take a look at some of the options. There are biofuels, which are made out of things like plants or vegetable oils, but they still produce some harmful emissions. Then there's electric, but although batteries are getting far more efficient, the size that you'd need to power a passenger jet would be way too heavy. And there's one potential solution that's getting people really excited. Hydrogen. Hydrogen fuel cells combine hydrogen and oxygen to create a flow of electrons around a circuit to power a motor. And as we all know, hydrogen plus oxygen equals H2O. The problem is... We, we can't do much about the fundamental properties of hydrogen. Volumetrically, we need to compress it to get sort of in the ballpark of not quite a third of the efficiency of fuels that we use. That means that we need often very large, very heavy tanks because they need very thick walls to deal with the incredibly high pressures we need them at. What you end up with is, is an aeroplane that can't have any passengers in. This is the challenge faced by Zero Avia, one of several companies working to make hydrogen-powered flight a reality. They retrofit existing planes with hydrogen engines. The company had several successful test flights with this plane last year. In the original frame, uh, we would be able to fly about 19 uh, passengers. It looks like a lot of kit in there. How would you fit in 19 people? Yeah, so uh, in the uh, retrofitted uh, configuration, it will be about uh, a dozen people. Daniela is one of the engineers working on the engine. Actually, are the fuel cells that are this one. The power is created in these small layers, so you have to build up your layers to create the power to take off an aircraft. This engine could almost provide enough power to get you from London to Glasgow, but not quite. If you wanted to scale it up for international flights, would you just make the same thing bigger or is it a totally different exercise? It is scalable until a certain power, but then we'll have to change technology. Getting this high power density system that will allow to have a lot of power, but minimal weight to be integrated on an aircraft is really a challenge. And that probably means completely redesigning the plane. Everything uh, will be shrunk. Some parts of the engine of the fuel cell uh, will be sitting uh, inside of the nacelle. And uh, also the storage tank, which is uh, uh, going to be probably the largest uh, you know, piece of equipment they will actually bring outside. Okay? Right. So either on the side of the uh, fuselage or uh, we will hang it uh, on the wing. Making everything fit isn't the only challenge though. We need to have the maintenance and repair organization. The whole process needs to be certified. We need to provide the hydrogen infrastructure to the, uh, to the aircraft. Zero Avia has a plan for that. In its vision, hydrogen would be produced on site at airports using renewable energy before being processed and transported out to the plane. But what about the cost of all this? At the moment, liquid hydrogen is significantly more expensive than conventional jet fuel. But backers of hydrogen planes believe it will eventually become cheaper than traditional flight. Zero Avia isn't the only company racing to reimagine air travel, though. Aerospace giants like Airbus and Boeing are also developing hydrogen planes. But there are still questions over how sustainable they'll actually be. We're going to be using some fairly exotic materials that are very energy intensive to, to arrive at. What energy are you using to, to build the fuel cell? What materials are you using? How much energy are we sinking into this technology to get something out? Zero Avia has the backing of the UK government and big investors and has over 2,000 pre-orders from airlines. So there seems to be significant belief in hydrogen despite all of the challenges. But what I really want to know is, are we going to be able to jet off to Spain anytime soon in a hydrogen plane? History shows that you need to start small and, um, and grow big. 
And that growth would take a while, but if this could be scaled to the largest of planes, then the difference to emissions would be jumbo.